got them on their home court. And we're off and racing here in this semi-final. The fans are standing. They're going to be very noisy. And Tony, as you said, New Zealand have to start well to stay in this game. Abercrombie taking it on Matt Knight, and he draws the foul. Abercrombie up against Knight with Nick of Vicona out. That's, that's the beauty of that, that matchup. Bring someone that's as quick and agile and, and just physically talented as uh, what Tom Abercrombie is. Uh, he's going to have some, the foot speed on someone like Matty Knight. But conversely, down the other end, obviously Matty's got the bulk on him and can take him down low, and hopefully they, the Wildcats establish him in the low post. One of the young guns in this competition, Thomas Abercrombie, gets the first in, scored 17 points. And just one rebound on Thursday night. I'm sure Andre Lamanis would like him on the boards a little bit more. His second one won't go. And it still should be a breaker's ball. So the breakers won. The Wildcats yet to score. We're very early in this first quarter. Here's Kirk Penny from the outside the arc. The basket won't go. Wilkinson, third man up, takes the rebound, resets the play. CJ Bruton, one of those dangerous ones. Penny's basket again won't go. And Wilkinson, the coach would be happy with that start from him. Hanari misses. Three misses for the breakers. Here's Damien Martin, defensive player of the year. His basket won't go. Abercrombie with the rebound. The fans will stand until the Wildcats score their first basket. Sometimes it takes a while, sometimes it doesn't. As CJ Bruton drops in the bomb. And that is a good sign for the breakers. <laughs> CJ looked down on his usual form. A championship player, someone that's won many in both Sydney and Brisbane. And that's a great sign, something they'll be uh, very happy with. One of the keys to this game, you'd have to say, we know what Kirk Penny's going to do. He's going to score somewhere between 15 and 20 points. CJ Bruton is one man. He's had a bit of a drought in recent times. Because we've got a little foul on Paul Minari. Kevin Lish slow to get up. And it's knocked down a fair bit. As I said, a scoring drought for CJ Bruton. Tony... Uh, in the last four games, he scored 5.7 points, 2 points and 8, and shooting at 34%. Yeah, look, a little down for CJ, but he's such a, a champion and someone that doesn't necessarily have to score big. You want him to have that ability to just see a little over-eager Gary Wilkinson pushing Andre Brown out. But, um, he's, he's a champion player and someone with those qualities that can just step up and kill you in about 10 or 15 minutes. And Gary Wilkinson just stepping in there with the armbar. I'm sure Andre Lamanis had liked that, though. You're up to the challenge. Finals time in the NBL as Damien Martin draws a foul on CJ Bruton. And he'll go to the line. And already the breakers with three team fouls. Not something where you want to be coming into someone else's gym and have uh, them shooting free throws. Still eight minutes, 20 seconds to go. And uh, one more foul and they're in the bonus. CJ just bringing his hands down there. That's the one that they'll always ping you on. If generally, if you're moving backwards and got your hands straight up, they're going to uh, let you get away with it. But it's just that... Bring the hands down, they're always going to try and uh, ping one on him. So Damien Martin misses the first. And on the board, finally, four plays one. And let's go courtside, Tim Hipsley. Yeah, Kevin Nish coming off. He's good. It's got, just got to put a, a bit of Vaseline on his head to uh, stop the bleeding, but uh, no doubt he'll be back on shortly. And an offensive foul on Paul Hanari. Matt Knight standing in the way of the big fella. Here it is again in slow-mo, just lost a bit of control of himself and put the head down and straight in good defence from Matthew Knight. That's that fourth foul we're talking about, Lockie. Now they're in the bonus. For every time the Wildcats are going to the line. Do you know what about the Rakers, though? They've got a spring in their step. They were very disappointed on Thursday nights. Desperate to redeem themselves. They'll be aggressive all night. Leave nothing to chance here in the jungle. Three points their lead. Martin looking to take it to the rack. His puck not so good, and Hanari will take it. Keep up that defense, Out of copy on Martin. And that's that time, a blocking foul from Damien Martin. No, 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 no. Yeah, just not getting his feet set. Going underneath him a little bit, just a little bit late. 
Daniel Martin, obviously the defensive player of the year, announced on Monday. Good streak, good streak. Just reward, I think. He's uh, been outstanding this year at the defensive end. Here's Penny. We'll get a foul on him as well. And goes on Cam Toby for the Wildcats. A couple of shots for Kirk Penny. And that's a much better shot from Kurt Penny. Before, you saw him coming off the screen and just hesitating that little bit. Up late, and then he was out of rhythm. Kirk is such a, a pure shooter that any time he's just coming off the screen in rhythm, you want to let him take that jump shot, even if he's got some, someone in his face. And uh, the initial three that he took earlier had a hand in his face. That one just straight up, and that's what we like to see. A nice, aggressive Kirk Penny. Just one basket in this game so far from the field and seven fouls. The refs... Having an impact on this semi-final game too. As Kirk Penny drops two in. He's shooting outside the three-point line, so he'll get another one. Six plays one. Five points is the margin. A great start to the breakers. It's now a six-point margin. The breakers lead. It's here in the jungle. Kevin Lish back on the court, which is good news for the Wildcats. it off the glass for two drawing the foul as well it's on Abercrombie and we've got a change for the breakers Braswell into the action Paul Hanari coming off and that was a nice passage of play Tony yeah, nice work by Cam Toby there Tom Abercrombie just getting stuck underneath the basket a little bit he's such a fantastic athlete and someone that can out jump anyone in this league and just getting uh, stuck out of position and uh, drawing the foul was Cam Toby Here's Penny again, he's taking his shots. That one won't drop, Knight with the rebound for the Wildcats. Four points, now that margin, Martin moving the ball down the court as quick as possible. Seemed to run them off their legs on Thursday night, just quick transition was important as Knight just battles his way around and then hooks it into the hoop. And that's, two. that's that mismatch we talked about earlier. Yeah, it's fine. The breakers have the advantage offensively down this end and, and exploited it, but it's the same thing down the other end with Matt Knight in the post. Alex Fledger about to come on, so some tall timber for the breakers as Braswell has it, looking for Penny. Leaving it a little bit open for my liking. Fancy move from Penny, but it's a little walk. I didn't think it was too bad. I was thinking that would go on the highlights reel, that one. Oh, yeah, I don't like to see that sort of thing stamped out of game. I, I think if you go down to super slow-mo, it probably technically was, but uh, he didn't take it, get any advantage. He, it was just a great move and one, and unfortunately for the breakers, isn't going to count. So two points is the margin, seven plays five here in the jungle. Damien Martin taking it all the way. Can't make that go in. Here's Matt Knight, they'll reset it again. New shot clock for the Wildcats. Here's the low post move from Matt Hart. Another two for the big fella. Barging his way through. The Breakers are going to have to send someone down there with their mismatch. Kevin Braswell there stuck one on one. Matt Knight's going to kill him down there all night if, it, if they don't rotate and help out. It's Kevin Braswell. Smooth as you like. Classy as ever from Kevin Braswell. Lish is keen to get it going, but he had to take on four. It wasn't a smart move. Decided to hold himself up. And another foul for the Breakers. Another one on Abercrombie. He'll have to have a rest. I'd have to think he's got a couple to his name. Both teams just a little erratic, a little messy. No one really smooth and, and fluent in offense out there. You know, a few fouls called. Eight already in the quarter. It's taking a while for both teams to settle down. Oh, two fouls so far. And Mika Vakona is on the court. Good to see him back. He is an absolute unit there for the Breakers. And there's no doubt the loss on Thursday night had a lot to do with his absence early. I think he played four minutes of the game on Thursday night. And also the Breakers' most recent championship player winning one with the Dragons. So it brings that sort of experience and intensity that was required. And he knows what, what that is. A bit of muscle under the basket for the breakers. Here's Braswell. The pass actually ended up to be a shot. Brown trying to deflect it. Here's Penny from outside. A little pushing under the basket against Pledger. And a foul for him. And they're in the bonus, the Wildcats. So Cam Toby 
We'll go to the line. None from four for Kirk Penny. He's got three points, but they all came from the free throw line. He's had a few shots too. He's had a few open looks too. Ones that you know you really expect him to to knock down, but he will keep shooting it. He's someone you know, and you need him to. The breakers have gone through him all year. The last thing that you can do in two days is change everything. That's the last thing you want to do. And uh, so they'll continue to adopt the same game plan that got them that 22 and six record. And he's the big. He's the main part of that. Toby one for two, and the Wildcats jump out to their first lead of this game. We've gone nearly five minutes in this first quarter. That looks dangerous for CJ. Can't make the basket. Andre Brown hauling down the boards. And Mika Picana gets a hand in. Slows things down. Very vocal out there, Mika Picana. And the points in the paint, well, the Breakers haven't scored in the paint. The Wildcats, through Matt Knight mainly, have done pretty well down in that low post and a bad turnover from the Wildcats. I think Rob Beveridge mentioned they only had seven turnovers in the game on Thursday night. As opposed, I think, to 17, so something that uh, the Wildcats should be pretty happy and want to keep that type of stat, similar stat for this game. He's Pledger up against Brown. Jumping around, the little jump uh, doesn't go, but Kona underneath, off the glass for two. And that's why you need Mika Vakona out there. He's such a presence on the offensive glass. And he's still going to give you that hustle. Lish into Knight. He looks like the go-to man at the moment. The basket doesn't go for him. He's Braswell working it up the court to Bruton. Outside the three, waits. Can't make it. Had plenty of shots, haven't they? The breakers just need a little bit of luck. Good there, good there. Good. Lish taking it all the way. That time he doesn't get it. He's Brown. That'll be a foul on Braswell. Just a little late. A couple of shots for Andre Brown, and dare I say it's uh, not the greatest shooting style for Andre Brown from the foul line. You have a watch right now. No, it's, it's not the textbook, one straight out of the textbook. <laughs> Basketball for dummies, you know that book that you look at every night? No, yeah, I yeah. wrote it. <laughs> so, here he goes, Andre Brown, the new recruit. Spinning the ball around, not so effective on that one. But he has been good. He was, I thought, very good on Thursday night. A lot of strength under the basket, scored himself 12 points. It's stepped up, it's all about stepping up at the right time, and that's what the Wildcats did on Thursday night. They need to back it up. So the shooting, not so flash from both sides. A little stutter from Braswell. Here's Vakona. Braswell wanting to get on his left and drive right. into the hoop. That one won't go. Mayton for the Wildcats, pulling down the boards. Stephen Wade, a long Good. way out. <laughs> he was tempted. Good. And no one came to him, so he said, why not? 11-10 is that score. The Breakers lead it by one here in the jungle. Fantastic hands from David Martin, like a thief in the night. He's Lish from outside the He makes it in. Well, there we go. Listen to the fans. And if Cal Bruton said Ricky Grace could steal hubcaps off a moving vehicle, so can Damien Martin. That was beautiful play from the Wildcats. They should go into partnership without a doubt. He uh, he has the greatest hands that I've seen in a while in this league. He just always coming up with deflections. Not always coming up with a steal, but just an exceptional player. And just opens up that transition game. And Kay Lish, that's what he's been doing the last few weeks. That's what they want to see. Let's go into the breakers huddle. Hey. Good job, D Trans. We're getting back in numbers. That part of it's good. We gave up one there, but the rest of it's good. On that low post, on the post ups, like again, do you work early? And there's been a couple of opportunities there where we could have come and blitzed on night, and we missed those opportunities. When he starts bouncing it, he's going. Keep being aggressive on that. Box out behind it. Against the press, all right? Four men stay behind. Whack, we're getting this. We've got this. And when we get one of these catches, like be a real son of a bitch here and go ahead and turn and attack, either on the pass or the dribble, be aggressive getting into it. So we get zone press break here, and then if it's a zone, go ahead and get a zone secondary against it. Get the short corner touch, 
when we're getting those touches, we need people cutting to the basket behind it. All right? We need people cutting to the basket. Good job down there. All right? Keep being aggressive. Let's go. Let's go. Positive stuff from Andre Lamanis, who thanks to Ironet looking after your NBL. It was Matt Knight. Very damaging early down in that low post. That was Tony Rollinson at his best, this sort of stuff, just working his way to the hoop. <laughs> I was fading away a little more, but that, that was exactly what Andre Lamanis was talking about, getting that double down. Uh, the Wildcats seeing the mismatch with Matty Knight down low, and the Breakers just addressing that in that timeout. It's Damian Martin once again. Can we say it again like we say it again and again? Just how fantastic he is on that defensive end. An absolutely awesome player. Damien Martin has had a sensational season as Braswell stops and pops, can't make the basket. Still off Kevin Lish's hands. And this is where the breakers really have to take stock. Obviously, they're falling down by four points. They're in their Wildcats gym. The other night, uh, you know, it was a, a ball game at half time, and then it was just one quarter that, that let them down, and they can't let it get away from them here and take bad shots. Here's Kirk Penny, Damien Martin having a rest. Penny trying to go himself and a blocking foul. The points will count as well. Kirk Penny deciding. It's time for him to stand up and have an influence on the game. The Wildcats 15, the Breakers 13. Without harping on Damien Martin, a uh, couple of weeks ago against Gold Coast, he had 11 points, 11 rebounds, 8 assists and 7 steals. Just an average afternoon. Not bad. Not bad. He had about 6 or 7 of those. As Penny tries to make it a 3-point play, and he does. One point now, the margin. And the man they call the Angry Ants, Brad Robbins, enters the court for Damian Martin. The double team working well for the Breakers. He's Brown and Wade. Had a pretty good game as well on Thursday night. Wagstaff was quiet. Wants to get a piece of the action. He drops his two off the glass. Just had two points Thursday, and he's got two already in this game. The pressure is immense. Vic Mika Vakona up and gets it swatted away by Andre Brown. Mika Vakona, he loves that rip through just on the dribble handoff, faking it to uh, Kirk Penny. Just see there. Trying to go up and under, but Andre Brown said no. Take it from out of bounds. Kirk Penny for that three. He was going to hit one eventually. It was just two, I think, for Kirk Penny. Put on the line. And there's a bit of uh, push and shove it between the two. Brutes of the game, Wagstaff and Mika Vakana. I like that. Trying to just mix it up. He's come to enemy territory. No problem with being uh, the man that they hate here in the jungle because no, they hate a fair few players. Not at all. And you love that intensity. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing dirty. Just two guys trying to fight for their own territory. It's fantastic stuff, Lockie. It's like awesome you and Goss on the news desk. Yeah, that's right. He usually wins, though, because he's the boss. <laughs> Well played by Braswell, one point now, the margin. Here's Penny again, shooting from outside. Kirk Penny has come to play. Fantastic three-pointer from the superstar. Stevie Way wants to rebound and drops in another one. Both teams now have relaxed a little bit, just seem to be flowing a little bit better. The shots coming off the hand a little smoother. Those nerves have all sort of disappeared. Here's Penny. Then to get the shots away. He's had seven shots from the field so far. He's made three of them. As Braswell lines up from outside, won't get it. Mika Vakona takes it. And there's a foul on Brad Robbins. Wait, 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 wait. And that's why Mika Vakona is so important to this team. He's already picked up five boards in his first quarter. Penny someone, who's, rest. someone who's got a strained middle, that's not bad. And the field goal percentage not great for the breakers and I suppose the only positive there is they're still in the game and they're shooting at 33 percent. As Mika Vakana goes to the line. Drops the first. All tied up again here in the jungle. 19 apiece. We approach quarter time in game two of the semi-finals. It's one all in the other semi-final. The Cox and the tight bands will go at it again in game three. And Dylan Boucher entering the court. Plays pretty well against the Wildcats. Was here, of course, uh, several seasons ago. 
Seems had a good record against Perth. Just his hustle is really, really influential on the game. And just someone that just has the, the knowledge that he has and brings to this team. He's not going to go out there and give you 30 points. He's not going to rip down 15 rebounds, but he's going to get other people involved. He's going to disrupt people defensively. A great teammate to have. Abercrombie working against Stephen Way. And Way with the foul. Couple of shots for Abercrombie. Has Kalish got a little Vaseline as we see Thomas Abercrombie taking it to the basket? He's got a little Vaseline on his uh, on the back of his head where he caught that knock. Yeah, yeah. What happened to the mummy? Where, where's the bandage around the head? <laughs> That's right. Hey? It's not so good for the photos, Tony, when no. they come oh, up, you know. They're a little more vain these the days, are they? Oh, no, you've got to look your best. Jeez. Andrew Gaze, of course, starting off that look many a year ago. Great start with the board, so just one for Abercrombie. Two points that margin. And this press working well for the breakers. They're just upsetting Perth's rhythm just a little bit. Here's Lish. Good hands from Braswell. Very close to a backboard too. Just got it over on the 16. Come on, Perth, everybody. A minute to go. And Perth just losing their way just a touch. A few turnovers. In fact, I have to say about three in the last uh, 30 seconds or so. Two points the margin. We've got four at the moment. New Zealand also on four turnovers in this first quarter. Braswell is looking confident as well. Keen to take on the game, and that's a great basket. Two points for Kevin Braswell. And four points is the margin. Here's Lish. Keen to wake up his teammates who are in a bit of a slumber in the last minute or so. Play from Matt Knight to Jesse Wagstaff. Yeah, great recognition there from Matt Knight. You always love your four and five men to work together. Jesse Wagstaff just cutting to the basket. Nice layoff from Matty Knight. Here's Abercrombie. Outside Webster. And a bit of push and shove underneath the basket. And it goes on Alex Pleasure underneath. Giving away a couple underneath the basket. And a chance for Perth to square it up. Jesse Wagstaff's been uh, pretty good. Yeah, you like that aggressiveness, but I don't know if that's the smartest foul going down. Going to walk 90 feet all the way to the other end. Stephen Way, a great free throw shooter. Just a... So the caddy's just 44% from the free throw line. So Stephen Way is probably their best shooter from the line. And as I say that, he misses. <laughs> oh, dear. Why do you fall for it all every the time? time? He is an 83%. Yeah, he goes all right. He's not too bad. We will so back him. Go. Yep. At least oh, one out of two. He's good at <laughs> But he does get the one. So one point is the margin. The defense good from Wayne, nearly causing the turnover. Time to give way to quarter time. Is Boucher to Webster getting some early game time. Robbins up in and at him. Great defense from Perth. But Webster did well. Here's Abercrombie flying through like Superman. Didn't dunk it, but finished it off with a two. Three points that margin. What can Lish do? Time ticking away. Sliding through the lane he goes. Way couldn't make it. We're going to be three points to margin with the breakers at quarter time. And right in the way, 25 to 22, and a telling step. Tony Rollinson in that first term. 21 free throws in total. The, eight, the breakers shooting at 80 percent the wildcats at 45. struggling from the line and we're going to be here for a long time if we yeah. keep shooting 21 free throws in a quarter <laughs> ever done a broadcast till midnight at nights in perth time when it starts at one do we get paid by the minute big play from brad robbins trying to keep it in play he smashed paul and ari tell us a bit about paul and ari you've played with him for quite a few seasons uh Hopefully for him, it doesn't go that way that the Wildcats win and he finishes up at uh, the only uh, breakout to have played every season for New Zealand. Yeah, he's really the spiritual leader of this club. It's someone that uh, he's not going to go out there and give you a lot of points, uh, but he's going to bring that intensity that's required to win basketball games. And he's been through the highs and lows at the breakers. And uh, I think that collectively the whole club really want to do it for him and, uh, and try and stretch out this playoff series. You know, the coaches on the back of their... Uh, Polo Tops have got uh, Paul Hanari or Hanari 32. Andre Lamanis 
Smith wearing the polo. I'm sure that would have been uh, brought in for the playoff series. I haven't seen it for the rest of the season. As we have a change, Damien Martin on for Brad Robbins. Yeah, they had a game a few weeks ago just honouring uh, Paulie and everything that he's done for the club. And not only uh, the club in New Zealand basketball, it's the Wildcats force another turnover in that backcourt. That's what they're great at, up the floor pressure. The Wildcats bring that every time, and if they've got that kind of disruptive defence going, they're going to be tough to beat in their own gym. Interesting, too, that they probably lost their way a little bit when Martin went off the court. He had him up at Lumwood's points, and he's really forcing it inside the key. It's Jesse Wagstaff getting amongst the action. Another two penny with the quick outlets. Up against Way, trying to barge his way through, and Stephen Wilde called for the foul. Yeah, the breakers not doing a good job down the defensive end of getting that second rotation as we just see there Stevie Way just not quite getting across. A lot of times when you're playing defense you've got to have someone come across and help and it's that second line of rotation and each time the breakers seem to be either getting hurt on, a, on an offensive board or just getting hurt with the layup. Two fouls for Stephen Way he'll rest up and Cam Toby not a bad substitute <laughs> pretty Talented player comes into the lineup for the Wildcats. Their depth, along with New Zealand, is what got them here. And the playoffs is Kirk Penny. He also got them here. Another you've, one from you've him. Got, you've got to make Kirk Penny put it on the floor. You can't let him come off in rhythm like that. He's starting to really hit his straps. Wagstaff enjoying a purple patch in this game. Another two for Jesse Wagstaff. And that's those rotations. If you're going to play up the floor, what the breakers are doing, you've got to be able to rotate to other players. It's not doing a good job, it's Dylan Boucher. Two defensive lapses from both teams at this stage. Just allowing layups, which is it's an unwritten rule, Lockie, no layups in playoff basketball. Make him earn it as Toby forces a foul on Kirk Penny. Jesse Wagstaff, we're talking about him, missed nine games. Very important player coming off the bench, and here's the uh, top points. He's leading the way for the Wildcats, but Kirk Penny with 13 for the game, and uh, that's what the Breakers needed. Their star player to come to play, and he's doing that right now. With the goatee, too. Bit of yeah, growth happening on the, and the Breakers. There's some pretty average uh, average bids out there. I think Tom Abercrombie's been growing here for about six months. <laughs> Toby's basket won't go. There's a great rebound from Andre Brown. But the Breakers... Up to the challenge at the moment. They lead it by six here in the jungle. Here's Penny again. That one was a little long. Lish with a bit of hustle. Pass inside to Knight. Won't go! Slam it down from Andre. He'll give it a delay of game warning after the duck because he held on. But I must say, talking to the Wildcats, Andre Brown, when he was recruited, we saw on YouTube the great highlights tape. It went for 20 minutes and every shot was a dunk. And that's his first, I reckon, since he's been here. <laughs> so we've been waiting for it here in Perth and he's finally unleashed a big dunk for Andre. So if you were the head coach of the Perth Wildcats, like you'd be going to YouTube for your, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. your recruiting. Is that how you get him? <laughs> yep. Fair enough. If he can dunk, he can play. Yeah. That's what I reckon anyway. <laughs> So it's four points to the margin. Hopefully that'll inspire the Wildcats. The Breakers, though, have been terrific. Here's Toby. Got the pass from Martin. He loses handle. Knight will get it back to Lish. A reset. Keen to get it inside. Here's Andre from the top of the key. That shot was a little off. Maybe he should dunk it from there. Hanari moving the ball quickly. A little too quickly as the quick hands of Damien Martin steal another one. It's his third of the game for Damien Martin. So a little bit of confusion. We'll have a timeout to settle things down. As I said, three steals for Damien Martin. A great start for him. 32-28 is the score. Six minutes remaining. In this second quarter, you thought so far, Tony? Well, I, I like the way that they've both, both teams have relaxed a little bit. That was a bit hickety picky at the start of the game, but they're really starting to find their form. The break is really struggling defensively or defensive transition as we uh, will listen to Rob Beveridge and what he's got to say. And they're making that. I feel it's a scenario. 
Yeah, we, yeah we've got to help out. But right now, he's going off. You want to switch it? Or you want to fight through? Now, here we go, Penny. Okay, we're we'll lock the trail. Okay, we're going to lock the trail. We're not switching. Okay, now. Here, yellow with the hard show. Then we've got to rotate. Keep getting on the glass. Transition. Have a look at the on-ball screen to reverse it. Kick it on, kick it on. But I like the tempo we're at. So keep the tempo going, boys. Here we go. Three, two, one. Well, Perth Wildcats coach Rob Beveridge uh, pretty happy with his tempo of his team. Here's Tim Hipsley courtside. Brad Robbins picked up his third foul early in the second quarter. He came off, he was not very happy at all. And now he's in the change rooms and has not come back out. Just smashing a few walls, the angry ant, but he'll come out and redeem himself. The brick walls back there too, that's pretty... <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna hurt. Head, head butted, I reckon. <laughs> Just, uh, we saw Rob Beveridge talking about uh, how they're going to guard Kirk Penny. Going to stick with the, the lock and trail instead of switching on that down screen. But you've got to make Kirk Penny put it on the floor. You can't let him just come out and shoot it. He's not the greatest decision maker when he puts it on the floor. You'd rather him doing that than shoot it in rhythm. The pass was good from Leash inside to Martin. And no score. Little foul on CJ Bruton. Martin will go to the line. As we said, they've been struggling from the stripes. So we'll see how Damien Martin goes. We are in the second quarter. Maybe things have just settled down. The nerves have settled down. Maybe not. I suppose sometimes too, as much as this crowd is fantastic for the Cats in the run home, but early on, the noise, the atmosphere, sometimes maybe puts a little bit more pressure on the team. Oh, yeah. yeah. Without a doubt, and, and after Thursday night, uh, they've got expectation on their head. I think most people are expecting them to get the job done today, and they reckon that the breakers are gone, so that can sometimes work against you as well. The defence... Sensational from the Wildcats, nearly forcing the turnover. Three points is the margin. Braswell, I reckon, has been good. A real general the start of this game. Keen to get it down to Pledger, up against Brown. Here's CJ outside the three, looking comfortable. That won't go in. Penny will probably drop it. Yes, he will. That was way too easy for Kirk Penny. We saw both players, both the Wildcats, running to Kirk Penny, obviously. Leaving CJ Bruton open, and not, you know, more often than not, he's going to hit that. But to give them a second chance from an offensive rebound and Kirk Penny for wide open three, Wildcats well, have to tighten that up. 16 points for Kirk Penny. It's five from 10 from the field, shooting at 50%. 100 from the free throw line. So he's had a great start to the game. Only well, scored 14 points on Thursday night. He was three of nine. And only eight seconds left on that shot clock. So the Wildcats are keen to get it in. That was just bad defense from the New Zealand Breakers. That's the last couple of times the Breakers have really broken down on the defensive end from an end out of bounds. You don't want people coming and scoring that easily. Braswell keen to go himself. Sometimes too, Damien Martin not renowned for scoring, so they probably just lay off him a little bit. Yep. And it hurts them that time. In, in that instance, they just anticipated that Damien was going to come off a down screen. Just played on the wrong side of him and just an easy layup. That's way too easy. Here's Penny again, getting an open look and getting another three-pointer for Kirk Penny. What a superstar. Seven points the margin here in the jungle. The Breakers, the visitors, are leading the way. And another turnover for the Wildcats. They're rattled right now. And the Breakers can make them pay. Bruton gets it inside the pledger. Good hands. And that night, though, saving the day. Here's Brown. Keen to get into Knight. His basket won't go. Knight underneath getting it swatted away from Vakona. Here's Penny. And there's a foul. A bit of work off the ball as well from Mika Vakona. He fell to the ground after smashing Kevin Lish and Dylan Bouchy will come on for Vakona. It's a great effort from Mika Vakona to be playing. He couldn't get on the court on Thursday night after hurting his knee. Yeah, he's someone that uh, has a big heart. And Australian media, while it's not, uh, it's not the most painful thing, uh, it just 
doesn't give you, you your knee doesn't feel like it's got any sense of tightness if that makes any sense like it just feels really loose and, and you don't really have that that tightness that's normally there and, or stability I guess is the best way to put it and uh, he's doing a great job to get on the court so a bit of tension here in the jungle. The breakers have come to play. They're 38. They lead the Wildcats by seven. Dancers strutting their stuff on centre court here in the jungle. Ordered by Tony Rollinson, that shot of the girls out there dancing. Do a fantastic job of putting on a great show here, Lockie. <laughs> I'm not going to get you into trouble this time. Didn't work. Seven points is the margin. Impressive stuff from the New Zealand Breakers. Let's take it from the Perth Wildcats point of view, Tony. How do they get back in the game? There's only five minutes remaining before half time. No time for panicking at the moment, but they just need to control the ball better. Yeah, well, I think a lot of it just comes down to shutting Kirk Penny. I mean, shutting him down. He's coming off screens. And whilst you think that, uh, you know, it's a contested shot and you're forcing him into a tough one, which without a doubt you are, they're going to need to do something a little bit different because at this stage it's not working. Like he's just been exceptional for the entire game. 19 points already. Only I have to have him 14 the other night. Six of 11. I think he started at about 04 or 05. So made his last six of six or so. So they really need to work out a way to stop this man who's at the free throw line. And he can stretch the margin now from the foul line. He drops the first. And he did just uh, before the ad break, did say to Andre Lamanis, I need a rest. So Abercrombie's ready to come on. Maybe a time for the Wildcats to pounce and get back into the game. So Kirk Penny sits down. A terrific performance in this first half. A real spring at his step. I've never seen a man run off the court so quickly. Uh, I'm telling you when, you, when you're hitting shots like his, you feel pretty good about life and you can, you can move pretty quickly. But uh, especially hitting those perimeter shots now, that's going to open up his driving lanes. They have to play up and in on him. And he's going to have an avenue to the basket now. Here's Martin taking it to the hoop. That basket won't go. Abercrombie trying to keep it in. It's still a Wildcats ball. Stats-wise, the Breakers have played in the jungle here in Perth 11 times and only won once. And the sheet of paper that was just handed to me said, Tony Rollinson, 31 points for the Breakers. Second top scorer behind Kirk Penny. That's not my handwriting. No, it is. It is yours. You gave it to me before the game. Said, make sure you mention this. Brown, great rebound, two points. Yeah, well, it's a tough place to play. And they have a great record here to the Wildcats. So. Not so great this year, though. They've lost four. They have struggled Perth. a little bit. Had a bit to do with, obviously, losing Sean Reddick at that time and a little bit of momentum. Without a doubt. But this is, I mean, it's just a different season now with playoff basketball. Uh, the crowd, we've got a full house here. All dressed in red. The sea of red again in the jungle. And uh, they brought their voices, and I think it's going to be tough for any team to come in here and get it done. Matt Knight sitting down. Jeremiah Truman, the man we call the president on the court of New Zealand, played with the Breakers. Provides plenty of hustle for the Wildcats. He only played limited minutes. And he's pretty good at picking players up off the ground as well. Jeremiah. He's got some hustle about him, has Jeremiah. He sweats a little bit. Does he? Just a tad. Just a tad. <laughs> yep. Don't know how he adjusted from the... Uh, <laughs> 60 plus days of 30 degree <laughs> heat that we had. Third foul on Alex Pledge. He's coming off for a little breather. Seven points is the margin. 40 plays, 33 here in the jungle. Four minutes remaining till half time. It's playoff basketball at its best on 1HD. Here's Brown wanting to get it inside to Truman. A little bit of football from Wilkinson. Wilkinson being pretty quiet so far. Someone that, you know, obviously was made part of the All-Star 5 on the weekend, uh, on Monday night. They need a little bit more from him to break it. Just two points for him. He looked a little cruel on Thursday. He's been battling a bit of the flu. Yeah, I heard he had a little bit of, a little bit of something and struggled a little bit. How would Andre Lamanis be handling this pressure, especially after the loss on Thursday? What sort of a coach is he? Is he pretty cool and calm and collected? Yeah, well, I think he's really evolved as a coach. Um, you know, Andre, four or five years ago, the teams he had probably would have handled it differently. And you know, speaking to him before the game, he was fairly confident that the guys could get it done. So, uh, and he's backing them. So, no score for the Wildcats. Kirk Penny about to come back on the court, which is ugly. 
for the home side because he's been so good. He's Bruton. Easy, easy. His father guided the Wildcats to their first right. championship. That was a great yeah, move from Gary Wilkinson. Shot. And we're going to see more of that. He's obviously a great shooter and someone that likes to float around the three, but he's such a big body, a big presence. He should try and establish himself down low if he's not getting those perimeter opportunities. Here's Truman for outside. Trying to go for the three-pointer. Probably not the smartest option from the big fella. The Wildcats get the boards and make it look okay. Toby trying to work it in. Hands it off to Brown. The Rakers want to travel. The ref will call a foul. We'll have a couple of changes. Here it is again. Your thoughts, Tony. Ooh, a couple of steps there. I think they caught it on CJ. He just put his hands in there. Didn't really get a great angle on that one. It's a nine-point lead here in the jungle. I'm just waiting to work out what the go was there, Tony. Called a foul off the ball. Let's go. Going to the line for two. Instead, I think they took it from the side, but it, they're actually in the bonus. So. But I had a good look at Cam it. Cam Toby hesitates a little, but gets it in. They look nervous at the moment, the Cats, don't they? They're just a bit shaky. One. Nothing flowing at the moment. It's Toby. And a little bit of uh, tension. The referees are going to try and uh, just fix things up. Mine, mine, mine. No, it's not the delay. It's not the delay. what you like, finals basketball. Come on, everybody, we need to run now. Tensions are high. Abercrombie keen to take on Truman. Oh, big block. Big block. Coming from the sides to Andre Brown. He's an athlete. Andre Brown, that was a great swat away. They had three coming all over him, Abercrombie. Oh, yeah. He's Penny, the danger man. Defense. Trying to take on Truman. He'd like that matchup right now. Wilkinson sliding through Abercrombie. The defense was good. The shot even better. Up Bra to the challenge. The breakers have to be careful now. Obviously, with Kirk being so much on fire that they just don't think that that's the only avenue they can get to the basket. They don't want to just be standing and watching as Kirk's doing jab steps on the 45, trying to get to the basket. They've got to keep uh, executing offensively if they want to maintain this lead. It's a nine-point lead at the moment. Stephen Way working against Abercrombie. Martin should keep it in play, he does. Here's Brown, just can't hit a field goal at the moment. And it's a breaker's ball. They're really laying off Andre Brown, Brown just daring him to shoot that little shot. They obviously feel like that's their best, best option, make him score. Wildcats 35% from the field, breakers 45. And Drew Williamson will come into play for Cam Tovey. And that'll spark from Kevin Lish on Thursday night. You just get a feeling they need something from one player out there, whether it's Martin, Way, Lish, not on the court at the moment. As at the moment, the Breakers are forcing this game into game number three in New Zealand. Wildcats going to the zone. It's key they know where Kirk Kenny is at all times. The foul, Andre Brown, just a little reaching in. A little unlucky too, never thought. A lot of hand there, didn't he? Yeah. Settling in now, Andre Brown. It's taking him a while, but he looks, the last two games, he's got quite comfortable. Starting to take rebounds, he's Penny. They've lost him again and again. Kirk Penny drops it in. And that's what happens in the zone. Sometimes you just get by, behind the line of vision of the the defensive player, especially in that uh, corner, that deep corner. So danger signs for the Perth Wildcats in front of their home fans. Brown posting up on Wilkinson. The little left-hander won't go. And the second bouncer might have had the last hands on that one. But anyway, the play continues. Here's Penny again on the outside that Webster couldn't get to him. What a start, 11-point lead for the Breakers. Penny 
down to Webster. His basket won't get up. Get the feeling the Wildcats must score here to keep themselves in the hunt and give them some inspiration as Wade tries to take it all the way. He's Brown dropping it in off the right. Needed that, Andre Brown for a bit of confidence. And the Wildcats are getting good looks at the basket. They're getting there. It's not finishing, not converting. They're getting those little two, three foot shots. They're just going to make it. The fans stand for the last minutes of the second quarter. NBL basketball on 1HD. It's tight and tough. Here's Boucher underneath. The hook shot not so great. Truman, let it go through his hands. Wilkinson, little jumper. He doesn't go. Webster couldn't take the rebound. Martin could. Listen to the fans try and drive their team. As Martin takes it all the way and scores. An inspirational wildcat he is. Just Drawing the foul as well, sorry Tony. He'll go to the line to make it a three-point play and try and trim it down to six. And a timeout. See him there going to the basket. Gary Wilson with an ill-advised shot down the other end. Wants to take some more time off the clock. Break his phone and get back in defensive transition and Damien Martin to the rim. He's the heart and soul of this team. No doubt about it. Absolutely, he's uh, Rob Beveridge's favourite son. Uh, oh, son? Well, well, he has got red he hair. Pretty he much, red hair he yeah, true. He pretty much is his favourite anyway. Yeah. Uh, the teacher's pet or the coach's pet is Damien Martin. He'll go wherever Rob Beveridge goes. And he's been terrific here in Perth. Sensational season. And he'd be hoping to play for the Boomers as well. 46 39 is the score at the moment. We've got 36 six seconds remaining before, <laughs> before half time. A little bit of New Zealander in me. That sounded yeah, 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 a little bit of much. Kiwi in there for you. <laughs> 36 nice. seconds remaining. Seven points is the margin. The break is with the ball. Uh, what play will Andre Lamanis be throwing up right now? Well, they want to take run it down as much as they can. I don't think they'll be going for a two for one sometimes, obviously, when you've got a little bit more time on the clock. But uh, he'll obviously try and be going to Kirk Penny. I mean, he's the one that's been getting it done all half, and I don't see why you want to change something. What do they say? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, so. There's no reason why they wouldn't just keep going through Kirk Penny. And their confidence would be back after this start to the game, wouldn't they? They would have come in low on confidence, but they've done very well to be leading this game in front of a full house here in the jungle. So Damien Martin will go to the line to try and trim it to six points. And we'll have two more possessions. On, We're going to close down this margin. We're going to stop down the other end. And then we've got another pass. Kirk Penny with 23 points as we approach half time. Damien Martin trying to score his nine. He's got nine points, Damien Martin. Here's Penny. Moving it up the court. Right hands again for Martin. Another turnover. Here's Way. Outside the three. Keen to get it all the way to the rack, and he does. Another turn for the Wildcats. Take a foul, Damien Martin. That's what that defensive pressure does. Forces you into quick shots. You think you've got a way into the basket. Wildcats doing a great job getting back. Braswell for the three. Super stuff from Kevin Braswell. As Martin shoots from long range. It was on target a little bit. The blaze that went to double overtime and 35 Cam Tregarty against New Zealand. So he's on track to break that. He's hit 23 so far. What can the Wildcats do? Can they shut him down in the second half? This was the turn they blew away New Zealand on Thursday night. Kevin Lish has been a little quiet. Can he get hold of the basketball? He's Camp Toby from outside. His basket won't go, and Abercrombie was shoved out of court. He's a little lucky not to, unlucky not to get a foul there, but anyway. So, Centibet, of course, uh, covering your NBL this year. They do a great job. Jump online. Breakers. Breakers 165. And Perth 225. So, gone from favourites to not favourites. Great play from Martin. And right in the does. Little tip in. Andre Brown also aggressive at the ring. It's a five-point margin. Going straight to that mismatch like they did in the first half. And the breaks have to make sure they get people on those boards. When you get when you're rotating people down, as Kirk Penny 
finds that lane to the basket and draws the foul for two. When you're finding uh, those those types of uh, those shots and, you, and you're rotating people down, you've got to box out and get five people on the boards. Thought you said he struggles when he puts it to the floor. Didn't look like he struggled there. That was a I didn't say struggles. <laughs> I said that he can have. That's that's the, the better of two options. I think is what I was alluding to. I'm trying to just create disharmony. Yeah, us. I'm trying my best. Yeah. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. But that's what he, uh, like I was uh, uh, talking about earlier. He makes those perimeter shots. It just opens up the lane for us. Sometimes if he has to make a decision on the move and you, you are guarding him one on one, it's better than him shooting the three. So nearly a turnover for the Wildcats. They get it back. Here's Toby outside to Martin. And he'll set things up. He's been keen to drive to the hoop as much as he can. Here's Toby struggling from outside. Three drops in a long bomb. Probably not the percentage shot, but he'll take it right now as the margin's down to four. The Perth fans stay standing in this third term. Defense. There's Penny. Really feeling it. Great play from Wilkinson. Just got through the lane and dropped it in off the glass for two. And while Penny's been a star, they, as you said, need a little bit more from Wilkinson and Bruton just to stand firm. Here's Brown up against Wilkinson. I won't mind if he wants to shoot over the top because he hasn't scored much. The Brown off the foot was a little unlucky. Basket won't go for Abercrombie. Knight made to work in the defense. Six points at the margin. Just got all the answers at the moment, the breakers. And I'll tell you what, Kurt Penny is sprinting up and down the court. He will be absolutely stuffed at the end of the game. He's doing everything to keep his team in the championship hunt. I've never seen anyone look after himself as well. Just a true professional, someone that you know I truly believe probably should even be playing in our league. And uh, even though, in all due respect to Gary Urban, obviously winning the MVP on Monday night, uh, Kurt probably the last four years uh, deserves to have taken that uh, title out for sure. Good defense from the Breakers. Just trying to force that turnover. Here's Martin, though. Gathers it from Toby. And a blocking foul on Abercrombie. He's got a couple now. I think that's his third for the game, Thomas Abercrombie. It's one of those tough ones to call. He, he guessed which way his opponent was going, just didn't quite have his feet set. There will be a time, having watched a lot of Wildcats basketball, there will be a time in this second half where they get a real run on. Without a doubt, they've got so much talent. I mean, Kevin's been quiet, Kevin Lish, um, Damien Martin obviously been trying to just rally the troops in the first half. But they've got too much Arsenal just to let it go. So it's a question of whether the breakers, not on their home court, can get up to the challenge. Toby takes the rebound and they'll reset again. His knight working against Fakona and he'll draw the foul on Nick and Fakona. Two big brutes going at it underneath the hoop. Yeah, Miko giving up a lot of height there to Matty Knight, a good five inches or so. But just bring those arms down again. I'll get you every time, Lockie. Every yes. time. I know. When I played. For the Balloon yeah. Boomers. Yep. yep. Under 12 under, A's. Under 12 A's. Yeah. Down on <laughs> that was Sheehan's it. Road in Temple State. <laughs> yes. Is that it, mate? Oh, that was it. That was... Oh, I got dropped after that. It's all right. That went good. Okay. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Super club. <laughs> That's from a spectre right there. <laughs> 53, 48 is the score, five points that margin. The breakers standing firm in the jungle. Penny from a long way out. Won't make it. Here's Martin. The pass is good from Knight. Oh. How did he score that basket? He looks way out of control, Matthew Knight. And he dropped it in off the glass. And he'll go to the line for another one. The pick up here, though. Right? You see Damien Martin getting out in transition. Many nights, 6 10, 6 11, off balance. Just had the presence of mind to be able to get the ball near the rim for the N1. 
That's ex exceptional stuff in the big fella. And they've caught unsportsmanlike, it looks like. Unsportsmanlike. We're caught up in it. Didn't yeah. even see the call. So Knight will go to the line. He needed to score those to keep the pressure on. He's got the crowd behind him now. Wildcats still with possession. And they're trailing by three. We've gone a couple of minutes in this third quarter. Whoa. Simon Devlin, one of the fans, Whoa. one of the most vocal fans <laughs> of the Wildcats. That bald melon reflects a fair bit, puts off the opponents. Here's Lish, but an offensive foul from Brown. Turning at the last minute. Just when you do that sort of stuff, you just got to do it subtly. But Andre Brown, just too much. Just trying to step backwards there. So three points still that margin here in the jungle. Here's Kirk Penny, how he got loose, not sure. To Gary Wilkinson, that is the way to break down the press. Especially when you've got three people up in the front court. In the back court, sorry, and just getting it over that first line of defense. Travel. A little bit of travel for Kevin Lish. Things not going the Wildcats' way. Bit of frustration for Coach Rob Beveridge. Just got to make sure they keep their cool though. They've done a good job. The Wildcats just staying in there. They've had the better of the breakers in this half so far. It's only a five-point game. That's two possessions. So another change for both sides. Braswell's on for the breakers. And Andre Brown sits down for the Wildcats. Jesse Wagstaff, who's had a pretty good start to the game, comes in. The most improved player of last year in the NBL. Martin Wallace-Gills and keeps it up with him. That was the loser. He's not. And an offensive on that night. If you don't like basketball right here, right now, you're a boring person because this is thrilling stuff. That is magnificent. Look at Martin. That's a on steal the ground, while on the ground. And still dribbled. And then look at the defense from Penny. Sensational. He just got there, too. I think that's a good call. Got his feet outside that charge zone. So the Breakers with the ball. It's still a five point margin. The Wildcats trying to force the turnover. A very important stage in this game. Braswell trying to work it inside the pass, not so good. Lish will get the turnover. He'll take it all the way. Yes, he does. The two points will count. Quick transition from the breakers. They want to get it to Penny. The man has been red hot. That one doesn't go. The Kona tried to take the rebound. Perth on a bit of a roll now. The breakers have got to stand firm. And Kirk Penny is pumped. We're going to have a change. Smoke out of the ears of Kirk Penny. The foul will go on him. The two shots for Matt Knight. No unsportsmanlike there. No, that's a good, just a good hard foul. As long as you're making a play for the ball, you know, obviously the, uh, the emotion started to come into the game now and the intensity's gone up a level. This is exactly what playoff basketball is about. It's what we love to see. Kirk with just a, a little rush of blood. The breakers have got to be careful. They've still got a three-point lead. Last thing they want to do is try and go away from what's got them that lead. And, and Penny has to focus on what he's been doing, and he's been dropping in baskets and being really aggressive. Don't lose the plot at this important stage of the game. It's a one-point margin. The Cats are storming back. They were trailing by seven at half time. Here's Bruton. Loses control, but dives desperately on the ball. Wildcat pressure just disrupting the breakers at the moment. Their guards don't really have an answer. Braswell. That's a pretty good answer. It's not a bad answer at all, but uh, the pressure defense really getting to the breakers. Really liking his game, Kevin Braswell. He scored nine points so far, but he's just been in total control in a playoff game. We've got a timeout just to cool things down a little bit. 57-54 is the score. Three points is the margin here in the jungle. 
Take a deep breath, Tony, and tell us your thoughts closing into three-quarter time. Who's got the control of the game at the moment? It's funny, it just keeps changing, I reckon. I think the, the Wildcats, they'll come out and play a, a couple of minutes of, of, of great quality basketball, and you think they're going to run all over the breakers and then vice versa. So let's see what Rob Beveridge has got to say and tell his troops. Hey, you got Penny right now? Okay. Now, if you switch, if you, if you had to switch on Braswell, okay, you just keep that hand there. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fine, that's fine. Keep the hand and contest the shot. Okay? Lock and trail, we've got to really lock him down. If we slow him down, that's good. Okay? We want to push there. Okay, so he's going to one, you go two. Push it up the floor. Have a look at crossing the here and get our shooters going on this. Okay? So defensively, we lock and try it. We got to show. If it's three, we want to have to switch. And we've got three last minutes to give away as the winning sprint. The brand new ice cream sensation. So it's still tight and tough. And Desperate needs out there. CJ Fruit knows all about winning a championship. Won a couple with the Sydney Kings. And then Kevin Braswell came to play the money shots from the three-point arc sensation. Did they give that a three or a two? I reckon his foot was on the line there. And you think that that was, uh, in fact, it was a two because it was 55 54. Yeah. So here's Camp Toby. That's why you're the expert, Tony. Robbins into the game. Haven't seen a lot of him. Here's Martin taking it to the hoop, a little hit to the back of the hands, and he'll draw the foul. Kirk Penny missed the first four shots in the first half, finished with seven from eight field goals, and then this half he's missed the first three from the field, all three pointers. He's got one more missing him then, yeah. before he starts heating it up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Don't sub him out yet, nah. Andre. Give him a bit of a chance. Yeah. And Martin misses the first. Then costly from the foul line. He'll get the second though, and it's a two-point ball game. Here we go, two points for the market. This is where the nerves come into play, and nearly a turnover for the Cats. The press looking a lot better in this half. Yeah, the break is really struggling getting it over the halfway line. Stephen Way on for Cam Tovey. Just been rotated those two throughout the season. Good double act. Back into the zone, the Wildcats. The pass superb to Bruton. Now it's with Braswell. Keen to get it up. Good defence though in the end. Here's Penny. One need to force it up. Two seconds. Bruton drops it in. And they're the best one sometime when you've been struggling. CJ hasn't been great offensively tonight, but he had to shoot that one. He knew that in rhythm. Such a great shooter, and uh, it's a great situation to be in. There's a foul there to That's his CJ. fourth, I think. Reaching in on Wagstaff. His and here's the foul. So Bruton's got four, Abercrombie on three, and Ari also three, and then Andre Brown and Knight, the biggest concern for the Wildcats with three each. So just hits a big shot and then has to go to the bench. They continue to stick around the Wildcats in front of their home fans. I just have a feeling Tony, this might go down to the line. I three points so. is the margin. I think so. The Wildcats, 15 of 25 from the free throw line. Will that come back to haunt them? Could do. Hope you're enjoying all the action on 1HD. NBL basketball. And I can say it truthfully at its best. Here's Braswell, keen to get up a shot. This is a good arc, but it doesn't go. Brad Robbins keen to get the ball up the court. He's got a few trailers in Martin and Knight. Decides to hold it up. Way inside to Knight on Pledger. He wants that little jumper. He's pretty good from there. Matthew Knight, and he drops it in. That's a great move. Just facing up there, seeing Alex Pleasure stand up off him, off him a little bit. He knew that he couldn't guard him if he was too close. And just a nice little jump shot. It's Mickey Bacone with another one of those rip throughs. There's the fourth miss from Penny. And it's a one point ball game. Here's Stephen Way taking it in. Wants to get out to Robbins. He'll whip it around to Wagstaff. Good defence from Bacona. Way from three. Doesn't go. Pledger taking the boards. 
60 plays, 59 here in the jungle, not far off, three-quarter time. Braswell going to the hoop and drawing the foul. Got to be careful there. I reckon he jumped sideways. He had a lane to the basket. Obviously knew he wasn't going to be able to jump over. Not bad the defense, though, for Wade. Not more he could have done. He was jumping and maybe a little bit his hands were yep. over the top, but phew, pretty unlucky there. So Braswell will go to the line and have four and a half thousand fans screaming at him. And this is the first. He drops the second, Kevin Braswell, and the double figures now. First time he's been in double figures, I think, for about 14 games, Kevin Braswell. Coming off the bench, best six man in the NBL this year. Had a great season. Fantastic import is Robbins, and a little travel from Brad Robbins. A little steps from Brad. Just got in the, in the lane there. Wanted to try and draw the, the defense and dish it off. And just stuck with the ball and just took those extra little steps. He has been struggling, Brad Robbins, tonight. Sort of player, though, that can ignite in a couple of minutes and turn a game. Defensively, he's up against Braswell, wanting to steal it away. Braswell's just shooting him. Chance he might just want to pass at some stage. Here he gets it again, though, and he'll reset. Might have been a little walkies there, too, from Kevin Braswell. Not called, and a turnover, though. Wildcats a chance to even things up here in the jungle. Yeah, the break is just struggling with ball movement at the moment. Braswell just sitting on the ball. Too much. Nice little step back. Breakers don't want to see him heating up after what they saw in the third quarter on Thursday night. Defense will be the key for the remainder of this game. Who's going to be toughest? 61 play 61 here in the jungle. Pledger up against Brown. Can't afford the foul. Big Andre. Robbins with the steal. Stevie Way will bring it into the front court. Boucher putting the pressure on. They'll reset again. Still plenty of time on the shot clock. Kirk Penny to come back on the court. Here's Robbins. Wagstaff, time ticking away, and he'll turn it over again. Two minutes remaining. And an offensive from Abercrombie. It's his fourth foul, too, Thomas Abercrombie. And he'll head to the bench. The talent of New Zealand, a great defence from Kevin Lish. We've got a timeout. We're going to take a short break. 61 plays 61. Back with us in just a moment. It's all tied up here in the jungle. Game two of the NBL semi-final series. The Wildcats taking on the breakers. If the Wildcats win, they're through to the grand final series. If the breakers win, it's to the game three and Kevin Lish... An important passage of play from him, a two-pointer and then force the offensive. Yeah, well, we talked about before the game that he was the one that stepped up in game one on Thursday night and uh, he's been fairly quiet so far with only the 9.7 before that, obviously before that basket we just saw, but uh, for the Wildcats to really, uh, well, they're back in it obviously, but to take that next step, he's going to have to take it to a, uh, and step up in himself like he did on Thursday. A pretty even spread of scorers when you look down, Damian Martin's leading away with 12 points then there's Wagstaff on 10, Lish on 9, Knights on 11. Unlike Thursday night where it was just all K delicious Lish. Wildcats ball. Not far off three quarter time here in the jungle. Kevin Lish with it. Now it's with Martin to Way. Back to Lish. We're working inside to Wagstaff. Two point up for Jesse Wagstaff. There's that rotation again, the break is just breaking down, not getting that second rotation, just around Wagstaff right down the middle. Hanari just gets it into the front court. Here's Boucher, being quiet. Hanari, could this be his last game? The break the fans be hoping not. Penny, been a star. Braswell, also been a star. From outside, three and rattles around. No one can take them up. Wilkinson does a big hurdle over the top. 
trying to keep it in play. It was good stuff, but he couldn't do it. Wildcats ball, they lead it by two. They seem to be going to Kevin List right now. He's sitting up from the point. Martin was doing it for most of the game. They're just running him off some screens down low. Putting it in, in his hands. The speedy list you have to wag stuff for three. And won't go. Brown trying to take the rebound, but Penny was there first. One more defense. Come on, Perth. Feeling the tension right now. Hanari, great move through the legs. He's Boucher, doesn't want to shoot it. Penny will, though. Outside three, Kirk Penny. Doesn't get it. Boucher gets the boards. Defense. 30 seconds remaining before three-quarter time. Defense. The Wildcats will get the ball back. No matter whether they score here, the breakers or not. Wilkinson, aggressive, charging his way, but it'll be a blocking on Wagstaff. Yeah, just not quite getting his feet over. Just a little bit late. The breakers needed something like that. They needed to get to the free throw line. They've really struggled offensively the last few possessions. Taking some pretty ill-advised shots, really. And probably Braswell, too. Been a culprit for that, Tony. And when he has been good, he's had a great game, but just probably a rush of blood for yeah, a couple look, of times. Yeah, it's a tough call, but sometimes, you know, when you're in a rhythm and he's, and he's getting it done, it, you, you, want, you don't want to squash that type of creativity, but you have to be able to read where you are in the game, the situation. We haven't scored in about four or five possessions. We don't want a uh, step back from three, so... There's been a few culprits out there, but I reckon he's been the main one. The Cats struggling to get it over the centre court. Four from 12 here, from the field in this quarter. Let's go, Wildcats. Let's go. Let's go, Wildcats. 15 Let's seconds go. to try and get a score for the Wildcats. They'll wind it down as much as they can. It's all tied up in the jungle. Martin with it. They want to get it to Lish. Wagstaff trying to work his way through. He'll draw the foul. Mm. Bit of body contact. Yeah, and they called a hands foul. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Such a cynic, aren't I? Know that. <laughs> You're not a fan, are you? You're not a fan of the... Uh, Mate, without them, we don't have a game. Correct. So, so lay very off much a fan. Time. Two for two for Wagstaff. I'll let him know what I think. Oh, exactly. The pass in, and this will be crucial. Time ticking away. Wilkinson trying to go all the way. That's not a bad shot in the end, but just doesn't drop in. Slot right now. Right here. Ask me that. <laughs> I'd love it just. To, I'd love the break to be just so we get a game three. Okay. It's been fantastic. Here's Hanari outside to Bruton. Closed in by Way, and there's a bit of push off the ball. It was against Bacona in the corner. Nick of Bacona now with three fouls for the game. Contre Lamanis is almost playing. He's actually stepped about a metre under the court. <laughs> Wasn't too happy with that call. <laughs> Mika just lowering the shoulder a little bit. I mean, it's, it's a borderline. Some of those can get away with others. I think it depends on how the refs are calling it. He's up against Wagstaff now to Lish. They'll go to him with the clock running down. He falls over at the crucial time. No foul call from the ref. You'd like to see him just uh, let it flow now, wouldn't you? Yeah, it's a tough one. You know, we don't want to get it too messy. We're just into a foul fest where every the whistle starts going. You know, it's obviously the, the physicality of it's going to probably go up a step in this last quarter, and they've got to be careful. They're going to stamp it out. But uh, we de definitely want to see the uh, players really forge the result rather than the referee's whistle. Wilsonari looking for Penny. Only scored two in that third quarter. Cal uh, C.J. Bruton trying to wind back the clock a little bit. Trying to work it into Bacana and it will still be a breaker's ball. Going to make a pretty happy man sitting back in Canberra watching this game, I reckon. <laughs> a that legend. little slip up. He yeah. is a legend, Cal. Absolute Cal. legend. Six on the shot clock for the breakers. They'll need to get one in. Trying to find Bacona. Time ticking away. A little spin move on Martin to Hanari. Doesn't go. They'll get the boards, though. 
The coach be wrapped with that. Here's Hanari. Outside to Wilkinson for three. A little short. Way. Quick in transition. Keen to take on Cal Jr. Wagstaff now to Kevin Lish. Wagstaff for three. Will it drop? Brown working hard against Wilkinson. A good battle there. Braswell to make his way onto the court. Here's Penny. Now with CJ. Can he do something special? Martin against Penny, the two stars of the game so far. Time ticking away. Oh, CJ oh, I was just about to say, that's exactly the sort of defense that said the Wildcats want to have. They've got Kirk Penny on the perimeter, going back and forth with his dribble, and CJ with a dagger. Here's Wagstaff, wants a little jump up from the corner, drops it in again. CJ's just returned from the car park after scoring that three-pointer. 67-66. Well, this is his time. This is where he wants to step up, take control. He talked it up in game one. Had a quiet one as Wilkinson drops in another long bomb. Mate, the, the one he just threw up from the side did not even look like it was going, going to be close. And then that's confidence in your shooting ability right there to throw that one up. Martin forcing it. We have drawn the foul on Wilkinson. He's only got a couple, so that's okay for the breakers. And Perth making their move. Big Matt Knight returns. Missed 13 games this season, Matt Knight, and uh, was pretty important to their structure, especially when Sean Redditch went down. And who will be listening in, Sean Redditch, from over in America? He's on the mend and hoping to return to Perth in May. So yeah. that's good news. Well, Perth have done a great job this year, obviously. Last year they had uh, Shenshia and Gordon Gay and Young Lake, but uh, the amount of disruptions they've had and with the injuries to obviously, like you mentioned, Redditch, Matt Knight, Jesse Wagstaff, throw that one in there, he missed a few games as well. They've done a great job to put themselves in a position to defend their championship. Counts for nothing though no, now, doesn't it? Because you're in the finals and here's Bruton, keen to score, working his way around Stephen Way. Didn't drop though the basket, he'll go to the foul line for a couple of shots. A little bit of the CJ of old there, a little hesitation on the reverse dribble, coming back onto his right hand. Wilkinson having a rest for the breakers. Thomas Abercrombie returns, he's got four fouls, so uh, we need to be careful as Bruton drops the first. 70-69 is that score. One point is the margin. CJ drops in it again. Two from two. Played his first game in the NBL here at the Perth Wildcats before he went off to college. But the Wildcats have tried to get him back on about five or six occasions, but uh, decided to head to Brisbane and then, of course, New Zealand. And a stint in Sydney. Here's Lish up against Braswell. Keen to take it all the way. The swat away was very good from Abercrombie. Braswell to Penny up against Knight and the foul blocking. Boy, he's hurt himself a little bit too. It's Matty Knight. So they're up to the challenge right now, the Breakers. They had a slow third quarter. But the Stars have come to play in this final turn. Can they hold on? You often see that when one of the one or the two men on the offensive team go and shoot a layup. They have no one on defensive transition, so there's a turnover or a Quick rebound. There's an often a uh, offensive transition opportunity down the other end, like we saw just then. Just mopping up the Matt Knight sweat, and we're ready to go again. Kirk Penny to the line. Looking for his 26th point of the game. One shot. <laughs> 100% from the foul line for Kirk Penny, and just as I say, wants to bet. No, he doesn't no. let me down. Good job. 
I think he was already in rhythm. <laughs> yeah, already in right. shot. I didn't go too early yeah, on it. He didn't go too early. So they stretched it out to four. The breakers got a little buffer here. With 6.45 remaining on the clock. We had a bit of overtime in the first semi-final. Well, they got in store as Lish from outside three can't land the bomb. Way's there to try and take the rebound and a little fumble. So nervous times now for the Wildcats. And I like Braswell just slowing the ball down a little bit, trying to get a good offensive set. The pass to Penny. Trying to work on Martin and he gets a steal. And that's what I was talking about earlier. Make Kirk Penny dribble the basketball. Steals from Damien Martin, five. And a foul in there for the breakers for CJ Fruton. And I think that might be his fifth. He's heading to the sidelines. See that footwork there from Damien Martin. And then just getting bumped from Matty Knight. Put CJ off balance a little bit. Put himself out of position. And So there's the foul, CJ's off with five, Abercrombie's on four, they won't want to lose him in the dying stages. Matt Knight on four and Stephen Way is sitting down on four as well. Hang on mate, hang on, hang on, hang on. How do you play these last six minutes when you are sitting on four fouls? Have you just got to keep going at it? Look, but I think you, you've obviously got to understand the situation exactly where you're at. Um, you know, you don't want to obviously just shut up shop and be a matador and let people go by you on, on defensively, but uh, you do have to play it smart. And I think it's all relative to who you are and how, you know, obviously you play different roles within the team. And to lose CJ is a, a big blow for the breakers. Little tip Jeremiah, for Jeremiah Truman. He's come on the court in his final two. Plenty of confidence from Rob Beveridge on him. Penny looking inside, Smith for Kona at the top of the key. Martin will steal that one, you can see it all the way. It was so pouncing hard, like it? a cat. You can just see, see it happening. <laughs> to Truman, don't shoot it, Jeremiah. Here's Toby. Matt Knight usually pretty good from there. Truman with a big one. Here's Martin from outside three. Runs around. Still two points to margin. That would have made the crowd erupt. Okay. Abercrombie taking it against Truman, and Martin was in there for the foul as well. And it goes against Damien Martin. Going straight to that mismatch. Jeremiah Truman against Abercrombie. Damien Martin just being caught out of position a little bit there, putting his hand up, acknowledging the foul. Two points is the margin here in the jungle. The Breakers lead it. Stay with us. This game has been exactly what the doctor ordered at the NBL. I mean, the doctor of the NBL. Uh, this is exactly what they're... I mean, it, it's, it's had everything. It's got the emotion, obviously. You've got someone like Paul and Ari. If he lose, the Breakers lose today, then they're out and he's, uh, he's off to the retirement village to join his uh, fellow uh, former teammates. So... It's had everything, and, and Wildcats, you know, they, they probably haven't played as well as what uh, the Breakers have, but they're stuck around. Uh, you know, Damian Martin's been exceptional. I think he's got six or seven steals now. Yeah, he's got seven steals. The playoff record is eight, uh, twice by D-Mac, and uh, Mike Ellis, a legend Mike of the Ellis, yes. Wildcats, a captain. Yes. The first Former. captain. And Ron Dorsey actually had seven in game one against Cam uh, Townsville, so... Still has five minutes to go. You wouldn't bet against him getting that uh, that record. So Thomas Abercrombie will go to the line. Two shots. The Breakers lead it by two. Five minutes, and it'll feel like ten minutes, I reckon, as Abercrombie misses the first. Especially for the Breakers, they're in a situation where there is no tomorrow. You know, they start to tighten up. The Obviously, they're taking those shots and uh, going to the free throw line. It's going to be a lot, uh, lot harder, a lot tighter. It's two of seven from the free throw line for Tom Abercrombie. Little foul, and that's number five for Thomas Abercrombie. He's out of here as well. And that's what you don't want to do. You were talking about earlier, Rocky. Like, what do you do when you're on four fouls? You try not to put yourself in a situation where the referee makes a decision. Silly and foul, it's a, really. It's a silly foul. It's a soft foul. I really don't know whether you want to call that. If he turns the ball over, maybe, but 
left it to get a player out of the game at that stage, you know. On yeah. such a soft foul. And he's just given a mouthful to the referee as well. I'm not sure whether he thought he was on four fouls. He's quite surprised he's actually off. He did seem pretty surprised. Nick and Fakana to return, so they're not really losing much, although Abercrombie scores more. Vic Mick is more a defensive power. And the Wildcats were working in their front court. They'd want to get it out of the hands of Jeremiah as quickly as possible. Three points that margin here in the jungle. Here's Matt Knight to Martin. Five minutes on the clock. And counting. Knight up against the cut. Nice shot off the glass. That's a great move. Miko is one strong human being and just been able to take the bump there. Did Matty Knight. Had the poise just to be able to finish it off there. And lucky, almost a three-point play. Braswell is now with Penny. Got it from Boucher. You think Penny will take it himself here. Little back step, looking for the fadeaway, then works his way into the move. That was beautiful. That's a beautiful move. First field goal in this half. Kirk Penny scoring the important one. Three points to Marks, and Matthew Knight makes it a one point ball game again. Listen to the house. Hope you're enjoying the action on 1 HD. Braswell, though, is a little short. He chases it up, though. Try and draw the foul. Truman does very well. Great face shot by Rob Beveridge, and he comes to the important play. Just expected to contact too much there. Braswell just go out and shoot the ball. They want to get it inside contact. the night. He's against the smaller voucher. Wants the fade away, it'll drop shorts. And Truman's caught one behind the play. And a foul on Damien Martin. Truman is down behind the play. Rob Beveridge is yelling at the referees. They obviously didn't see anything. He's in a lot of pain, Jeremiah Truman. One point is the margin. We might just have a little delay in the game as we work his way off the court. Rob Beveridge saying, what's that? Here's the true Jeremiah Truman. He's up on his feet. Here's the slow-mo. Truman behind. And just a little bit of an elbow. Mika Vakanda looked at the ref saying, I hope you didn't see that. <laughs> but anyway, he didn't. Not sure how bad it was. But got him right in that uh, the important that area. He was down. So break his ball. They lead it by one here in the jungle. The New Zealand fans will be soaking it up right now. Will they see their team play again in New Zealand? The pass to Penny was beautiful. Oh. The shot sensational. He, he didn't even look like that was in his hands properly. But as soon as it left, it didn't look like missing. Three points now that margin. The Wildcats in a pretty impressive performance. Most times at home, although they have struggled, here's Brown drawing the foul that needed to drop to go to the line for a three-point play. He'll go for two shots, though. Yeah, he was wishing that one went down, the way that he shoots free throws. So 2.53 on the clock, Andre Brown goes to the line. He's played 13 games this season. A recruit midway through the year when Sean Redditch went down. And they had Matt Knight out as well. Andre drops it in. So it's seven points tonight. And he drops two for two. Steps up to the plate, eh? Hey? Right. So it, was, it must have been a three-pointer for Penny because uh, it was 78 to four. So they've counted the three. So it's 79-77. That's the score. He's the danger man to Wilkinson. Rattles around and Knight takes the boards. We are going down to the wire here in the jungle. Jamie Martin with the ball for the Wildcats to Brown. 
on the pivot foot, loses control. Here's Toby, he also loses control. The breakers come up with the ball. Every possession now, turnovers can't afford to have them. Come out. Come out. And we've got another timeout just to stretch it out this little bit more. We're going to take a very short break, but don't go away. It's two points to margin. The break is leading it here on 1HD. Nervous times here in the jungle for Perth Wildcats and their fans. Big surprise winners on Thursday night, Tony, but they're two points down right here, right now. Yeah, well, all. They're both, both teams have put themselves in a position to get the job done. Two, two minutes and 20 seconds. People obviously have to, uh, for each team, they don't want to uh, cough the ball up like Cameron Toby did. They want to get good, solid shots. And defensively, they don't want to give any second chance opportunities up. They want to get rebounds and make sure that they don't give up any offensive ones. Well, it's going to be an interesting finish. Were you just checking yourself out on the camera there? Oh, yeah. it's, a, it's a bad oh, look. I, I apologise for that. I think you were. <laughs> you organised that camera, didn't you, Lockie? Like it? Kirk Denny, two from seven from the field. Here's Tim Hipsley, courtside. Rob Berry's looking for Matt Knight to get them over the line here in this last quarter. Here's Penny. The basket won't go. Will Fakona keep it in? He does. An important passage of play right there. And there's that offensive rebound we talked about. It gives another 24 seconds to come off the shot clock for the breakers, who are obviously in the better position, being two points up. They'll drag this down, 11 on the shot clock. Patient stuff from the breakers. Just need to score here to keep the pressure on. Braswell from outside three. And hits it. The big game player, Kevin Braswell. Well, Five we, points I gave it to him a few minutes ago about bad shots, but when they go in, everyone up on the bench is pretty, pretty happy. His list inside to that man, Tim Ipsley said. Strong word from Matthew Knight. He turns to the fans and says, come on. Three points to margin. Matty Knight having a great game with 17 points. Shooting just under 50% from the field. And New Zealand just keen to milk it as much as they can and rely on that big basket. Martin into Braswell. He'll stop from outside the arc. Will he hit it again? You are unbelievable, Kevin Braswell. He has come up with two of the biggest shots you will ever see. Six points is the margin. The breakers have turned to their sixth man. And he has just put a dagger into the heart of the Wildcat fans. Nothing more you can do about that, Lockie. Let's see what Rob Beveridge has got to say. Well, that, here's the threes from Braswell. Keen to go from outside the arc. That one, swish, baby. And then this one is gold. What more can Damien Martin do? I mean, that, you just, if that's what's going to beat you, you just sort of put your hand up and go, good job. Six points that margin. And we've got a minute five remaining. It's a massive possession right here now for the Wildcats. They don't have to go for the three. I think it's important, you know, it's a, it is a six point game. But you, I mean, you just want to convert a score, get up and in, try and force some turnovers. Just get a good solid shot to start with. And if it does pan out the way the breakers win and we go to a third game, we talked about leading into this game, the psychological advantage Perth had it. All of a sudden it just flips over the other it, side. It flips completely, I mean. To go into someone else's gym twice in a year, uh, twice in a week and beat them, especially when you've got the championship on the line. Well, that, obviously entry into the championship games, but it's going to be a tough ask. This is the man that needs to score some baskets right here, right now. Camp Toby, the pressure from Vakona. Trying to force it in. He goes for the fadeaway. That one won't go. Lish with the boards. Can he get it in there and he'll draw the foul? So Lish will go to the line. A lot of players under there. The foul on Wilkinson. Wilkinson just getting him on the arm there. How important is Mika Vakona to this team, though? I think it just shows, proves the point. What a great move they made last year. Getting rid of their old four man and bringing yeah. in a young, <laughs> sprightly Mika Vakona. <laughs> two for two for Kevin Lish. 
Four points is now at this margin. Everyone just on edge in the building. Just can't work out whether there's going to be a game breaker for the Cats or whether Kevin Braswell will light it up again. There's a foul there. And they've gone to the foul line straight away. Fouling to, to force the breakers to go down the other end. Paul Leonari, not the greatest free throw shooter in the world. Obviously feel that the pressure going down the other end and, and making two is worth the risk. There's, there's still 50 seconds left and there are 49 to go in the game. So Paul Hanari to the line. He's hoping it's not his last game and that would go a long way to making sure he has one more left in him. Two for two for the veteran. And we've got another timeout just to stretch things out a little bit more. Six points is back at the margin. In a moment, we'll head in and have a listen to Rob Beveridge as he got a three point up his sleeve. And as you said, you probably need to score. You just have to score, don't you, as opposed to trying to push a three pointer. Set the stroke. Okay, so you're off that. You've got to shoot it. You've got to shoot it. Okay? Right, you guys just crash the boards. Okay, so you're out here, Greg. You just crash the boards here. Now we foul the Kona or Hanare. The Kona or Hanare. Okay, so let's get up. Maybe you can sort of face guard, but as soon as they catch it, okay, I want Hanare to get the ball. Okay? Hey, keep fighting here, boys. We go three, two, one. Okay. So foul, Vakona or Hanari, but first they've got a score. They certainly do. The Wildcats from three have been pretty average this game, only shooting 14%. Fairly even on the rebounding count, though. It's only six points. And turnovers. The Breakers with 19, obviously, will be disappointed. Both teams will be. The Wildcats only uh, having seven turnovers in game one, now 14, popping it up a little bit more. Here we go. 47 seconds remaining. Oh, Lish tried to shoot the three. You want to feed it inside to Brown. He loses control of it. They've done that a couple of times. New Zealand once again are up to the challenge. That's the wrong man to foul. They have no other options. Kirk Penny will go to the line. And will stretch it out to eight. Ten of ten from the free throw line tonight. So not the man you want to be putting on there. Plenty of smiles on the faces of the breakers. Given Braswell, he's pumped at the moment. <laughs> He'd be feeling pretty damn good about life, wouldn't he? Hit those threes. He might have secured himself a job for next year again after those two. So the breakers will stay alive with a win here this afternoon. Kirk Penny misses the first though. You're saying the game's over? Is that what you're saying? You Perth nearly did, didn't you? Yeah, I think Perth will have to do something special to win it from here. It's a seven-point margin now, 35 seconds remaining, and as you said, their percentage from the three-point line is not so great. It isn't at all. And another timeout as we drag it out just that little bit longer. I told you we'd be done by midnight. Well, we're going to have to make Mark Weber wait a little while at the <laughs> Malaysia Grand Prix, I think. We're gonna, we just got through to the Red Bull team, said five minutes, fellas, before you can get going. Sensational stuff from the breakers, though, this afternoon. They came here. Not many would have given them a chance. I know they were the top team. They had a fantastic season, but many people were saying their season would be over this afternoon. And right here, right now, they forced it to game three and kept their championship hopes alive. Yeah, and I was one of those people that really doubted whether they could get it done. It's such a demoralising thing when you have game one in your own gym. Uh, you've got all the momentum of coming out of a 22-6 and six season, and then all of a sudden the defending champion comes over and, and gets the job done, and, you, and then you're coming back to one of the better and most vibrant environments in the league, in the jungle. And to get it, I mean, it just shows you where the breakers are at and how long they've come. Four or five years ago, this organisation couldn't win a game. They really struggled and uh, they've done a great job of putting together um, a really competitive team and have been thereabouts for the last three years and really um, they've put together a team this year that really should go all the way. 33 points for Kirk Penny. We said earlier on, I think 35 was the highest individual tally by a player this season. So 
He needs a couple more to get there. And New Zealand have never won a semi-finals game in their history. With 34 seconds away from possibly doing it his way from outside the three. The rebound from Knight. Toby gets the three. So they need the foul again, you would have to think. Can they steal it though? They can't. And Penny will go to the line again. That's where those boxing out getting those rebounds. You, if you break it, the last thing you want to do is give them a second chance like they did there. Give Toby the opportunity to shoot the three. One shot, it's important that they get on the boards. So Kirk Penny to the line again. Four points to margin. Once again, he can stretch it to six. Or five, depending on how nervous he gets. There's five. He's had a steely resolve today, Kirk Penny. He's been on a mission. That shot short. The boards for the Wildcats. Still time. Kevin Lish wants to force it. Up to a basket. He does get the two. Game is still on here in the jungle, Tony Ronaldson. We've got a timeout. It's a three-point ball game. We're back to three points. Wow, we we're in a stop and a storm. Wow, we. I like it. <laughs> I had nothing else. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Nothing else. I'm a little bit speechless. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go into the breakers in just a moment. But I tell you what, it's been a sensational game of basketball. When you get to where we, it certainly has, mate. <laughs> yeah. Let's go in now and listen to Andre Lamanis. KB, that's you. Here, that's our first look, try to get the KB if we can, okay? If he doesn't have that catch, it's here for Kirk. And again, get some space, like start up here more. Start further, connect it so you've got somewhere to run into. So Paul, you start about level with the elbow. Okay, so everyone else plays off that. And then G, you open up in your heart to the basketball. Again, after you throw it in, Mix, you got to come in real quick. Just be aware that they hack for it first. You've got to be strong with it. Don't just wear the foul. You've got to be strong with the freaking thing. And if it needs to pass out, it needs to pass out. If something happens, obviously no threes right now. All right? Obviously no threes right now. We're in a great position right now. You're not standing Well, there we go. Andre Lamanis with his last words. One three score. points is the we're margin, Cam Toby hitting a big three-pointer. And then it was followed up by right the speed of Kevin Lish through the centre of the key. And he dropped it in the hoop to make it nice and interesting. And you just see there all the breakers players trying not to have a foul. Hang on, the ball came in, Kirk had the ball. Yeah, Kirk Penny will go to the line. Oh, no, 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 sorry. And a bit of confusion now, it's a breakers ball. So it must have been a timeout before the foul, was it? So no foul was called. I think so. So the breakers get the chance to stretch it out. Will they milk the clock? Will they be fouled? I think they'll have, they to, have to be. They're going to foul them. And Kirk Penny will go to the line again. 15 seconds remaining. Five fouls for Damian Martin as well. What a sensational game from him. 14 points, Tony. Seven steals, five assists, and six rebounds. Exceptional player, and someone that uh, we just love having in our league. Going to be a boomer for a long time to come, and it's just great to watch him play. He's not someone who's going to go out and give you 30 every night, but just what what else he brings is awesome. Kirk Penny to the line. He'll drop the first, smooth as you like. Whereas this guy will probably bring you 30 more often than not. He's just been, you know, he's had his ups and downs in this game, but he's just stood up. And he's missed the other one, but Vakona's taken the rebound. They'll have to foul again. They'll have to go with Penny. Oh, that hurts the Wildcats now. Every time you say something about how good someone is on a free throw line, eh? Every time. <laughs> yep. I could almost trust myself with him, though, I would have thought. Yeah. <laughs> He's on 35 at the moment. 35 has been the most for the season as Kirk Penny nails 36 points. And I think he thinks the job is done. The superstars come to play in the big games. Wade gathers the ball, time ticking away. Lish has got a score here. Give him a chance. He'll be stopped on the three-point line. Williamson's there. Can he hit it? He does hit it. 
with 1.1 on the clock. Still a two-point margin, though, and 0.5 seconds remaining. It was a foul. It's this game that it is. Oh, it's been amazing. <laughs> this thing is all over there. That was a great shot from Drew Williamson. And Kirk Penny will go in line again. So point five on the clock. Two points down. The Cats needing to miss at least one of them. He drops the first. New Zealand are celebrating. Two from two for Kirk Penny. We are back to New Zealand for game three, ladies and gentlemen. What a performance by the New Zealand Breakers. They win it by four. Tony, you could wrap up the game. Well,